proteins are an essential nutrient in our body, body and uh, are what make up our muscles and many of our organs. Amino acids are the, the building block for making proteins. So let's look and see how amino acids are constructed and how they're put together to make a protein. The amino acids in our body are called alpha amino acids. This is because they have the amino group on the alpha carbon. Every amino acid has a carboxylic acid, a carbon adjacent to it, and then the amino on that carbon adjacent to it. We call this carbon the alpha carbon. Now, I've written the carboxylic acid functional group like this, as the book does, but here I'm showing you how it can be written showing the individual bonds. Remember, a carboxylic acid has a carbonyl and then the hydroxyl. The R group differs for each of the 20 amino acids. So this R, which stands for residue, which is what we call the side chain, that R group can be uh, 20 different things. Now, because we have an acid functional group and an amine on there, they react with each other. Acids are acidic and amino groups are the organic bases. So whenever you mix an acid and a base together, there's proton transfer. Because this is on the same molecule, what we find is that the proton is transferred from the carboxylic acid to the amino group. So the amino acid does not exist like this. Instead, it exists in this state, which is called a Zwitter ion. So um, you're going to see it written that way in the book, but I wanted to show you how, why this is easier to recognize as an acid and this is easier to recognize as an amine, but this is really how it exists. Of the 20 common amino acids that we have, 19 of them have a nit the amino group has nothing on it and we call this a primary amine. The, there is one that actually has the carbon chain that is attached, the R group, actually comes around and reattaches to the amino group. That one's proline. So that's kind of interesting. Of the R groups that are on there, one exists with just a hydrogen, where R is just a hydrogen. And this is the simplest amino acid that we have. Its name is glycine, and these are the abbreviations for it, either GLY or a G, capital G. So this is glycine. The R group can be neutral. So here is a neutral side chain. So the residue is uh, just an alcohol, which is not an acid and not a base. Serine is the name of this amino acid and it has the abbreviation SER or just plain S. The side chain can have an acid functional group on it. Aspartic acid, or sometimes it's called aspartate, has this acid functional group right here. See, it's just the same as this acid functional group and here it's deprotonated. So there's a carbon and then a carboxylic acid functional group. Some amino acids have basic side chains because they have an amine functional group. This is lysine and it's got this four carbon chain and then at the end it has an amine group. Here it's showing the amine being protonated. The alpha amino acids are all chiral except for glycine. So you have four functional, I mean, four different groups on this carbon. The carboxylate, the amine group, and the R group, and then hydrogen. For glycine, there's a hydrogen here, so it can't be chiral. But all the other amino acids have a side chain that's different from these. And so you have four different groups who are chiral carbon. The 
uh, amino acids are written very much like a sugar in that they are drawn in a Fischer projection with the carbonyl carbon up. In nature, all of the amino acids are L amino acids, except for a very few and some unusual things. But in our bodies, all the amino acids that we use are L amino acids. And remember, all the sugars are D sugars. So the amine group is on the left. This uh, amino acid shown here, the way we draw an official projection, is always where the carboxylic acid is up, the R group is down, and then for the L amino acids, the hydrogen is on the right, and the amino group is on the left. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, just like uh, polysaccharides or starches are polymers of sugar, polymers of glucose stuck together in a big long chain. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, and so it's a bunch of amino acids stuck together in a big long chain. It is formed from the carboxylic acid of one amino acid reacting with the amine of the another amino acid. So here we have the carboxylic acid and the amine. And what they're going to do is condense. If you remember, condensation is the removal of water to form, uh, to join two molecules. So we're going to remove that water and join them. And then the bond that is formed is called the peptide bond. That's why uh, proteins, which are polymers of amino acids, are often called polypeptides. Peptide uh, bonds can't be formed like I just showed you because it that's only on paper. It's an uphill reaction and you can't just start joining them together. Even boiling a bunch of amino acids together will not cause them to form a peptide bond. You have to have something to help it do that. And what we have are enzymes in our body and we have energy from ATP. And with 4 ATP making ADP, well then uh, that provides the energy for two amino acids to condense into a peptide bond. The peptide bond is planar and rigid, but this part of the molecule is flexible and can rotate around, but it's chiral, so you always have a specific arrangement. Let's join two amino acids to form what we call a dipeptide, which is two amino acids joined together. So here's alanine and here is serine. Alanine has a side chain of a methyl group and serine has a side chain of a hydroxymethyl. We're going to remove water and form a peptide bond. Okay, what we would do is call this Alacir for the two amino acids that are in here. We always write our amino acids so they start at the end terminal, the amine of uh, the amino acid with the amine that is free, and then end with what we call C terminal, the carboxylic acid on uh, uh, is uh, free on the end one. So this is how we write it in abbreviation. We show the N terminal, then we say ala, sir, and then the C terminal. This part and this part are often left off, out, and the dipeptide is just written as ala, sir. So here's an example of an oligopeptide. It has um, eight different amino acids in it. The N terminal is arginine, and the C terminal is leucine. It's just one amino acid formed by a, poly, a peptide bond here, a peptide bond here, a peptide bond here, a peptide bond here, and here, and here, and here. The amino acids that are in it are arginine, alanine, glycine, serine, 
phenylalanine, phenylalanine, alanine, and leucine.